Hello, me again. Well, should we? Thank you. Why we are talking about generics? Well, uh, it is well known uh, to a certain number of people here that certain pharmaceutical companies are producers of very good quality generics. Uh, during many years, many of those companies uh, reached their uh, position in the market uh, in former Yugoslavia, and they also exported to many countries know how to make drugs. It was a significant po uh, product, generic drugs and know-how, uh, from former Yugoslavia, but nowadays from countries arising from former Yugoslavia like Croatia, Serbia, and Slovenia. We now have a good uh, generic industry. Domestic pharmaceutical industry is divided by several companies, international ones and one state company, but they are producing their own generic uh, variants of drugs used in many, many situations. And we are very, very uh, familiar with the concept of generic drug, with the concept of uh, drug which is controlled by the Serbian Agency for the Drugs, and they're very useful in, and they're used in our everyday life in our hospitals. Moreover, uh, they help us to reduce uh, to a certain extent costs, but uh, to uh, allow treatment to those who we need. On the other side, we have uh, different issues. We are not part of INEA. We are different, and our uh, act, our legal act, which allows uh, generic production, also uh, shortens the possibility to uh, branded producers, innovative drug producers, to protect their drug. Uh, as you said, as you have seen from my previous lecture, we have very centralized system, and many drugs are purchased on a central level for the whole country at the level of. Uh, uh, health insurance fund. So all drugs for the hospitals are coming from the same source and negotiations are on the political side, not on the medical side or uh, directions of the hospital like in Croatia. There are a lot of pa patent and regulatory issues concerning generics and concerning branded medicals. There are approved indications and of course there are a lot of discussion about price, pricing policy and reimbursement concerning generics. Uh, luckily or not luckily, uh, but many published data we have is uh, are results of published trials mainly with uh, uh, branded drugs, uh, which has come from uh, phase two and phase three clinical trials. And these uh, items may uh, raise some several questions concerning uh, labeling of the drug. We are now facing the problems with the off-label use of many drugs from the, few, from the past, such as platinum compounds in oncology, such as increased in cyclophosphamide, which are not entitled for all malignant hematological conditions. But what we have as a difference between generics and branded drug? We have a possible difference in the manufacturing process uh, due to original procedures. Uh, just to remind you, until 20 years ago, many countries protect manufacturing process, not compound itself. Uh, formation of uh, WA, uh, World Trade Organization and international treaties uh, protected compounds, not the processes, and that's the main dispute in uh, generic manufacturing. Also, as you have heard, there is a lot of discussion and a lot of differences within additional substances in the drugs due to process of production and process of purification of the medical compound. Of course, there is a certain difference in absorption, drug kinetics, and metabolism because it is not similar to have a capsule than a tablet or a tablet which has been hardly pressured. Maybe except pharmacologists and several doctors here, you don't know how to produce tablet. Tablet is produced by uh, pressure of pulverizing substance and excipient, that means a sugar or something else, to create a tablet under the pressure from 50 to several hundred kilos per tablet. It's completely different if you have a tablet pressure on five, uh, 50 kilos or 100 kilos in the machine, in the pressure. Generally, in the generics are approved according to bioavailability data, and you have heard from the previous, uh, previous speakers. But uh, for many generics, we do not have long-term safety and efficacy data, and it, these are European directives used in Europe, but also in many other countries. What we have the issue of generics in Serbia. Brandinimatinib was introduced in Serbia and registered in 2011, but unfortunately allowed for the treatment of CML patients 
uh, just from 2006, as you, see, you can see from my previous lecture. During late 2011 and first half of 2012, we have a lot of problems in uh, obtaining enough drug for our patients. We have uh, problems with the uh, delays of regular monthly supplies of uh, Gleevec, and uh, we were told by people from the health fund that the problem are finances. Approval of generics, for generics in Europe, by, was uh, a compound called Anzovip by Actavis as domestic compound. Why? Aktavis bought uh, several years ago our domestic pharmaceutical companies called Zdravlja Leskovac, and it was uh, become a part of Aktavis' network of uh, companies. And uh, therefore, it applies domestic law that the domestic producer can launch uh, compound before the uh, expiring of full patent protection. So therefore, we just simply were, uh, were struck by the fact that we have generic imatinib in 2012 registered at the beginning and we have the issue uh, of the decision by the Ministry of Health and the Agency of the Drugs. We were, uh, we, we were, we were informed that there are some generics, uh, compounds, genetic, uh, generic imatinib can arise to a market but we do not know when, how and which one. Completely medical, medical, uh, medical uh, public was uh, unaware that the drug will enter into the market. Well, after its approval in January, appro uh, it was approved, as far as we told, by a bioequivalent trial performed in accordance with the EMEA regulations, and as far as we know, the trial was performed in Canada on healthy persons. But it was based on single kinetic dose and bioequivalent data, and a uh, people from a pharmacology told us that the, those data were equivalent from the agency as the proof of uh, registration process. But there are a lot of questions arising. We have no any practical experience with such drugs in the country. We have different pharmaceutical form. Before we have capsules, now we have tablets. We have no enough published data about the efficacy and the safety of the compound because we simply do not know exact data. We, we should search uh, directly in direct contact what we have and we have informed that the compound is alpha crystalline form. There is a lot of conflicting data in available media, let's say internet or available media uh, con concerning generic copies of drugs specially available in the world and branded Gleevec also. There are well-known consequences of inadequate CML treatment, such as blast crisis and inevitable transformation in patients who are not treating well. We know that because for 25 years of treatment of CML, me personally and many of my colleagues were aware how the blast crisis looks like, and that's the worst thing we can, uh, we can have in our patient. We also have a bad experience in the uh, 90s, we were under the UN sanctions due to war in Bosnia and war in former Yugoslavia, and we have a lot of uh, generic drugs imported or packed in our companies, and we have a lot of adverse reactions, a lot of allergies, and the people in general are very sensitive to issue that they are receiving or changing their drug. Patients are not pharmacologists, patients are not doctors they are stuck to certain drug, and especially when you're treating patients with uh, age, let's say, 50, 60, they're very, struck to, to, they're very stuck to certain name of the drug, even though it's a generic or it's a, it's a full name or branded name, but they're st stuck to their drug, and very often they think uh, about the drug like a toy in kids. So what we know in 2012, there are several forms of imatinib, alpha, beta, delta and amorphous uh, imatinib. There are different production technologies. There are several procedures called crystallization, and one is alcohol, the other is acetone, depending on the manufacturer. There are long-term patent dispute in India. I have read very carefully all chemical patent lawyers telling the Indian High Court at Madras or in Chennai about uh, patent disputes and about patent pending of issue India versus Novartis, vice versa. Well, we need a long-term treatment, and we know the effects of imatinib, especially if we know effects on blood level testing, especially that a certain number of patients have a problem with transport of the drug. 
there is something called organic, uh, trans uh, organic uh, cationic transporter, which um, uh, transport acid metabolites into cells, and it's very relevant to uptake and metabolism of a drug. We know also that possible side effect and tolerability of imatinib in general, its interaction is uh, based to blood level testing, but also efficacy and long-term toxicity. As one of the previous speakers said, there are a lot of excipients, that means other substances within the, the, within the pill, and also some impurities. Those things should be directly monitoring by our agency, but in the past we have seen that the agency was not capable to do that for all drugs. According to that, we addressed several issues called uh, imatinib pharmacokinetics and uh, efficiency, especially imatinib uh, efficiency according to plasma level concentrations in several papers published by French group. Unfortunately for us, in the moment of uh, introduction of generics, we as a country do not have a blood level testing of imatinib, which is uh, available in many European countries by European Leukemia Net uh, Network, because just simply in our country, that uh, procedure is designed as international trial, and for international trials, you should have a sponsor, and you should not change the, uh, change the dose of the drug without uh, any notice. So we just decided, decided not, to, not to join to that program. Unfortunately, it would be of good uh, help of us. What also we know? We know there are some published cases of loss of response. Those cases uh, rise in some uh, journals and could be found on the internet. Uh, we have read very carefully all those, uh, uh, all those uh, articles, and we have uh, several issues concerning uh, management of those patients. But on the other side, we should not uh, say that there is no any change in biology of disease after change to imatinib. What we have more? We have more to... Uh, publications Ryzen and published in EHA in 2011 from London. One is a group from Iraq where the many patients lost their response. Uh, the abstract is not quite enough uh, as a publication, but it's quite informative that a certain number of patients progressed uh, after the switch to generic form. But on the other side, we have uh, in the same number of uh, hematologica, from the same Congress, a bulk of patient, 26 cases from Morocco, with quite good experience and quite good response. So, with introduction, we have a standpoint for hematologists. We have a pressure because our health fund decided to buy the drug of the tender procedure. That means the, the cheapest one. It was done by law. It was done by uh, regular procedure. There is no any obstacle that uh, things are illegal. The, uh, all drugs, uh, generic variant, Anzovip and uh, Glivec, have the full approval by the agency, so they have uh, full papers, and we have no possibility to make uh, kind of, some kind of uh, obstacle and say we do not like. So we should uh, think about patients. We should think what they can have, and we should think about uh, that inadequate response could be only documented in patients taking a drug in a cohort analysis and especially follow-up of the patients. This issue came in the, in the summer 2012, and in a September meeting, uh, in the celebrating day of CML, there are a lot of questions concerning the uh, generic form of the drug uh, in our patient society. The, the only answer I can provide to patients in that moment is that they should take a drug, because in the case of not taking the drug, I cannot evaluate anything. So. We should need a certain time to evaluate because CML is quite a long developing, uh, developing disease. And of course, the second question was, do we have a rescue for our patients? There are a lot of questions raised by patients, by media, and there's a lot of things you probably have heard in one of those previous meetings by Yelena. We have decided to how to solve the problem. Because of all that, and because of a political issue to a certain extent, financial issue to health insurance fund, because uh, there is uh, also a problem with the purchase of drug, we have decided to follow up uh, uh, patients very carefully. All patients were switched to generic form. There is no any patient who will live on, the sa on a simple uh, branded drug. Even the patients from the previous clinical trial 
uh, who were on uh, Gleevec were soon switched to generic four. We also noted in several months of switch that a certain number of patients lost their response. Their long-term previous complete cytogenetic response was lost with 50-60% of Philadelphia without any further notice. And all patients have their full hematological response and also they all belong to intermediate socular risk group. Luckily for them, all those patients were switched to nilotinib to, and gain their good complete cytogenetic response and good molecular response as well. But also, we should note that in the beginning, when we have the branded drug, we have a certain number of patients uh, losing a response at two, three, four years, even with branded drug. So it should not be uh, some kind of astonishment, some kind of surprise, but the number seven is a quite larger because we have two or three patients in uh, our center. We decided to carefully follow up a cohort of new diagnosed, diagnosed patients who started from the beginning the generic variant the drug, and also to carefully follow up all patients after the switch and to perform cytogenetic evaluation, approximately about six months from the switch. The problem for molecular monitoring was that uh, it was so slow and we should not rely on our molecular monitoring in that time, and we decided to use much stronger prognostic indicator such as cytogenetics. What we have? In a cohort of patients newly diagnosed, uh, we have decided, just in the clinical center, to perform analysis, cytogenetic analysis at three months, which is not ultimate by our recommendations. And we have seen that most patients have uh, optimal response, Cy uh, complete cytogenetic response or major cytogenetic response. At six months, that number becomes much clearer, and it was very similar to numbers published in IRIS and NEST ND trial. After one year, these are the last data I have, those data are uh, updated in December and January this year, uh, we have seen that almost 80% of patients achieved complete cytogenetic response, which is the similar to data I have presented in the morning concerning branded imatinib. But we have seen also that a certain small number of patients, about 13%, several patients are losing their previous achieved response. We are a little bit concerned about those patients, but we think that we should uh, follow up those patients much longer to be sure what's really going on. Is it a problem of uh, adherence? Is it a problem of uh, drug metabolism? Or just simply a problem of something else, such as uh, drug supply? But drug supply nowadays is much better. On the other side, we analyzed 23 patients with the switch, within six months from the switch. We decided to use uh, only those patients who were switched and who have a recent cytogenetic evaluation several months before the switch and to compare those results. You can see we have chosen patients on different doses, 400 and 800 milligrams, in patients with the different intervals and the length of treatment. And in all 23 patients, we have uh, documented that there is no additional loss of response. That means the loss of response in our seven patients are probably due to problems with adherence or drug supply. And for the end, this is never ending story. The story about generics you have heard from the beginning. We have nowadays two more generics on the market. In the moment, they are not on the market, they are just approved by the agency, but we will think that we will probably have the same situation like in Croatia, they have seven drugs. Luckily for us in the moment, our insurance fund are buying directly that drug, and we are aware that in the case they will change in generic form, it will last at least six months so we can follow our patient. Of course, we can say that our form, generic imatinib by uh, Octavis, is efficient replacement of branded, uh, branded drug, and the drug is working. We have not seen uh, some uh, severe toxicity and not the different from branded, branded uh, compound within 18 months of follow-up. We have seen uh, in both uh, drugs, we have seen leukopenia, we have seen uh, some elevation of liver enzymes, some problems, but we have not seen very different uh, toxicity grade three and grade four. Response is similar to published data, and that was assure us that we should follow and that we should be on the safe side for the, our patients. And to be uh, honest, to be a little bit relaxed in communication with them, because it's always very hard to say, you are taking a drug, but I, don't know, I do not know how it will work. 
But I think that it's necessary that uh, pol policy uh, demanded in Canada should be very uh, demanding in other countries. That means short, uh, further comparison in short trials, in uh, comparison to comparison in randomized or non-randomized cohort trials should be uh, needed in introduction of genetic compounds, especially because we are treating severe disease like leukemia, like cancer, and just simply pharmacological bioavailability data are not always necessary or always enough to be sure on the safe side when treating cancer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Uh, here are the first question. Thank you for your uh, excellent uh, presentation. I would like to ask, when imatinib was first uh, formed, it was in the form of capsules of 100 milligrams. Yes. Later, they uh, changed it to tablets of 100 milligrams. No. We have capsules for all time. Uh, we have no capsules 400. We have no tablets. Oh. So just in Serbia, we have 100, cap 100 milligram capsules from Novartis all the time. Oh. Because we have now one 400 milligram, one tablet, and uh, uh, there are some uh, information that there are differences regarding the side effects of the three forms of the, of the uh, drug. So, but if you don't have them, it's uh, different, difficult to, to uh, compare. Uh, very difficult, but I must say two or three things. Uh, first, uh, not all patients are the same. Uh, even in time when we have only branded, uh, branded, uh, branded drug, we have patients taking the drug differently from the, the, those it was written. You all know that uh, it was uh, suggested that the patient should take 400 milligrams immediately at one dose, even though it's four capsules or four tablets or one tablet of four milligrams. We have several patients who just simply decided to take drugs two plus two or two plus one to plus one. Is it wrong or not? I do not know, I'm not a pharmacologist, but uh, I cannot uh, decide what the patient should take at his home. And the main problem with the, such a drug, with the generic compounds, is that uh, patients are taking those drugs to home, they're taking by themselves, and that's also a problem with adherence. Uh, we all know from the medical possession, uh, profession that we uh, talk a lot with patients, with you. We are uh, trying to explain many things, and we simply do, not, uh, do know that many of you sometimes are missing those, sometimes are deciding to omit those, and unfortunately, uh, in the last two months, we have two or three persons who admitted that they missed more than half a monthly dose, <clears throat> voluntarily. So it's very hard to uh, talk about adherence. Uh, we cannot whip the patient in the case of non-adherence. Uh, concerning the uh, dose of the drug, I know that for some patients they have tried 400 milligram capsule, uh, tablet dose nowadays. Some of them prefer because they're taking only one tablet a day and they have no problem. I know also some of my patients who are demanding 100 milligrams tablets because they are taking two plus two or something like that. And uh, they are just simply, uh, just simply provide me information that they feel better with a smaller dose and taken in smaller interval. That's all individual and it's very hard to say which one is the psychological, which one is medical, and which one is due to uh, particular compounds of the drug. Okay, Milena. Thank you. Milena from Slovenia again. Uh, I wonder, do we still have here our first speaker, uh, Dr. Joseph Karako? Uh, yes, he's here and he will be joining us for dinner, so you can ask him uh, during the dinner. Uh, uh, yeah, but is it possible now, just a short thing, because it, it's connected to that. I wonder, uh, could we have just a short answer or opinion from Dr. Uh, Karako? Um, what would he suggest us about uh, switching between uh, several generics. I think it's very confusing uh, for us and very hot topic. Could you, uh, Dr. Karako, please say your opinion? Is it safe or is it not safe to frequently switch between different generics? Okay. Uh, from the scientific point of view, if two generic formulations are 
uh, by equivalent and therapeutically equivalent to the reference drug, so it means they should have been uh, similar. But there are some other issues uh, regarding compliance, etc. So the frequent switching from one formulation to another is something that we should really avoid because patients get confused. Patients are not used to, you know, every time you do such a switch, you may end up in the patient stopping the medications because he thinks this is not the same drug, etc. So, um, you know, you have to, and this was raised before, there is also the ethical issue. We have to remember that once we decide that we are going to switch our patient from one drug to another, let's say from a reference drug, from the original product to the uh, generics, the only reason we are doing that, I mean, for this patient in front of us, there is no advantage for him. Actually, he's getting the same drug, you know, at best. But we're doing it because of the societal uh, uh, interest, because we're trying to save money so we can, uh, we're able to uh, uh, give some more drugs to other patients and to, to uh, be able to uh, progress, etc. So I think if you do it once, that's okay. Doing it uh, continuously, repeatedly, that's a thing uh, entailing on, it, it's going to uh, uh, cause the patient a lot of problems in terms of compliance, etc. and I would not really recommend doing that. Should I, should I comment uh, as a hematologist? Uh, I think that uh, fast switching of a drug is a uh, very dangerous business, especially in hematology and oncology. Uh, we do not know the full metabolism of the drug, even though we are uh, establishing that for a long time. As Professor Krakow uh, said, uh, uh, switch once, switch twice after the certain time is probably yes, but not switching every month. If the hospital is buying a drug every two months, every three months, you probably will have a problem you're facing in Croatia, you're facing us here in Serbia, that they will uh, buy the cheapest one. I think the uh, the psychic, uh, the, 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 the patients are devoted to certain drug. In the case they feel that the drug is good, they have a good adherence to such a drug. And uh, that switch should be done, controlled by doctors who are following you, should not be done by voluntarily, and should not be done without proper monitoring. In the case we should have uh, blood level testing, I will be much more reluctant to all that issue concerning genetic, uh, genetics in Serbia. But unfortunately, I do not have that program because it was not allowed uh, officially by the Serbian authorities. Uh, but in the, in the case you have a blood level testing, such as you have in Slovenia and you have in Croatia, as far as I know, uh, that switch should be followed by the blood level testing. Uh, having in mind that blood level testing has also <coughs> huge variations in the same individual during a certain time. <coughs> it's not really 100% uh, accurate, but it's quite enough to be sure on the safe side. But I will not recommend to my patient to change a drug at least at six months interval in the case of that. And I think that uh, Serbian society present here uh, will uh, f help us in forcing people from the health fund not to change drug just only on price, but to leave the patients on a certain drug to be able to follow them. You can switch the patient from one, after one month uh, to another drug, which can take uh, for three, two, four, five years, but not switching patient every three or four months just because of the financial matters. That's, that's make a problem with the patient, that make problem for doctors. We simply do not know what's going on. And just to remind you, the trough level concentration in Iris trial was done after 28 days of continuous imatinib treatment, not after the single dose. So I would ask uh, Dr. Bogdanovich, because he is the one who has opinion in treating patients with generics. Um, if you have a patient and you can give him generic drug or the Cigna or Gleevec, which one would you choose for him or she? Yelena, unfortunately there is oh, Okay, unfortunately there is no generic Cigna. <laughs> No, 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 I asked for uh, generic well, hematinium, it depends, uh, or... it's, a part, it's a part of uh, talk uh, we have missed yesterday evening, unfortunately. Uh, which one to treat patient? Uh, as far as I mentioned from the beginning, 
certain selection of the patient is of utmost importance. Maybe it looks like, for, from the patient perspective, uh, wrong or erroneous. But not all patients are for all treatments. That uh, should be designed as a, what would be the goal of a, such a treatment. Uh, to relieve the symptoms, to keep the patient alive, and uh, provide him some quality of life, to treat him for a lifelong treatment, like hypertension with the one drug, or several drugs, or to provide him a good response with possible uh, treatment cessation. Uh, tomorrow you will have a session with uh, top uh, trials, and I think that's, uh, differ there is a difference between the patients. One is the patient of 20, 25 years of age. The second one is a middle-aged man like me, like uh, 40, 50 years of age. And the, the other, at the end, is a person of 65, 70 years of age. They have all different goals and all different ideas in the rest of their life. For younger, who will want to have a family, who will want to stop the treatment, nilotinib frontline is the best treatment in the moment, even though they have, they, it has some obstacles concerning, uh, um, concerning uh, side effects and concerning change. The satinib is also frontline uh, good choice in such a patient, especially because many younger patients in the world in general except in well-developed world in uh, Western Europe, are coming to a doctor with advanced phase of disease, not maybe advanced, but with the high SOCAL, with a huge spleen, high blood, high blood cell count, especially in Serbia. For people of the middle, age, of the middle ages, which is the most common form uh, of patients with CML, people of 40 50, 40, 50 years of age, it's very important to know what kind of comorbidities they have what kind of uh, life they are leading, and what are they are thinking about future CML. You must provide them idea that they will be sticked with the one treatment, lifelong, and in that main moment it will be imatinib, branded or generic. Uh, unfortunately, I have no possibility to discuss with the patient. Probably we do not have a co-payment in Serbia. We have everything covered, and we should follow the, the rules from the government. In the case, probably, that I'm living maybe in Western Europe, I will provide patient imatinib uh, branded because there is no further evidence on my market. And for people of 60 years of age, or maybe more, with comorbidities, it's very hard to say what kind of drug is better. Maybe imatinib because it's uh, much more safer on cardiovascular side than any other drug. Generic or branded, it would be the same because any long-term side effects which may occur, we do not know which one and when, are uh, on a long, much longer term that they have a lifespan. That's kind of my personal opinion as a doctor treating leukemias for 25 years. It's a creation on individual, individualized treatment of a particular patient. Thank you, doctor. Um, I know that most of you are maybe still confused. I'm also a little bit confused <laughs> as well. So I hope um, that, the session, that this session was interesting enough. And I ask you to come at 6.30 uh, to the lobby. Oh, no, Jora will ask you to come to, at 6.30 to the lobby.